Decimus Fabius, a prisoner to Frank King Claudio, writing to the dear friends in Rome. I pray to God every day that you will stay safe and that Claudio's murderous days will come to a soon end. He has begun or continued the siege of Campus Frisi and I pray that our troops near Vicus Franci will be victorious over the Franks. Their desperation is showing that they are hiring more mercenaries near the city. To my joy, I can report that a Roman host is trying to retake Augusta Treverorum, led by brave Captain Silvanus. <clears throat> I'm a bit worried though that are the troops Silvanus has enough, even though perhaps Captain Magnetius uh, or Captain Magnentius is bringing some reinforcements. However, Claudio is ready to invade Campus Frisi and <clears throat> it may be the day when Marcus the Gamble, Gambler has had his last gamble. <clears throat> we can just hope that his gamble will prove to be successful. I'm still appalled that uh, our generals decided to attack against the Franks. I cannot believe that our beloved emperor would make such a mistake. I think he has been misinformed surely or some of the generals or captains have acted on their own accord. Claudio ordered his troops into a position in the darkness of the night that's only fitting to their dark deeds that he is planning to commit. If he can take Campus Frisi. However, we have to have faith in the brave defenders in the city. The Frankish horde is utilizing the tactics they have already found useful. And some brave Roman archers <clears throat> are trying to burn the battering ram so that at least the gates could be spared. And they are successful there. However, the Frankish archers are in position, so they can begin to return fire. At the moment it seems to be a battle of archers, however, Marcus the Gambler is pulling his troops back and while they turn their backs to the Franks some arrows fired in the blackness of the night will hit their targets. It has to be said for Marcus the Gambler that um, his decision 
to bring legionaries to the battle here. Most likely is very wise. <clears throat> However, the way he is using them is not as wise as the decision to bring them. Because even their heavy armor cannot protect them from arrows that are being fired from behind. And even from the outside we can see that the stones next, uh, rather the roads next to the wall are littered with brave Roman defenders or their buddies. I just cannot grasp what Marcus is doing there because he has lost almost the majority of his troops without achieving absolutely nothing against the Frankish horde. If I didn't know that Marcus is an honest Roman, I would suggest that he has received money so that uh, he will sacrifice his troops and that the Franks can get in easier. And the Roman troops had taken so many casualties from the archers that their morale just didn't hold when the Franks moved into the city. And the future day, most likely, will be as dark for the Romans as the night of the battle has been. The settlement is being lost and Claudio can add a new batch of victory to his already horrifyingly impressive list. I pleaded for Claudio to spare the innocent citizens of Campus Frisi, but he said that his head will not be turned. He had the shine of gold in his eyes and he decided to take it by force from the innocent population of Campus Frisi. However, even taking that town was not enough to slake his lust for blood and conquest and gold. So he ordered his army to march without giving them a chance to rest. And it seems Samaro Briva will be their new target. Order. 
at the same time Tancred at Augusta Trevororum was determined to break the seeds. He had the numbers, <clears throat> he had quite experienced army and the Romans of Frosis were clearly lacking most of their heavy infantry and the number of heavy cavalry was also limited. I'm afraid that the raging Franks will prove to be too much for the defenders of the city, or rather the offending army. Perhaps my lapse there means that I'm hoping that the defenders would be overcome, but I'm afraid that that won't be the case. I dearly hope that the Roman general in charge of the troops here will be up to the task so that his troops won't be slaughtered as they were next to Vicus Franki a couple of years ago. At least Captain Silvanus had the understanding to keep his forces far enough from the city walls. He had positioned his light cavalry on the flanks, some archers to the front. and then his infantry behind the archers. I'm worried though that the Franks will have superior numbers of archers with which to face the Roman archers and they were prepared for an archer combat. The initial volleys were successful for us. So we may still have some hope to win the archer contest here. However, the battle is not continuing as well as it began. We have suffered greater losses than the Frankish army attacking us. And um, the arrows are continuing to fly. While the Roman army seems to be in some kind of disarray, there seems to once again to be some kind of indecisiveness. I'm just wondering if we are keeping our brightest generals somewhere safe and they don't participate in the battles so that 
we could have chances at the front. And clearly the initial archer battle is turning to the Franks advantage. Fortunately, from the front, the Comitatensis, the brave legionaries, seem to be just impervious to enemy archer fire. Tancred ordered his horse men to move against the enemy light cavalry which of course left the Frankish center vulnerable however the flank of the friendly cavalry of the flanking friendly cavalry was soon broken and um, When our infantry moved against the Franks, the cavalry was already in position to hit their back. And I was right to be afraid. The initial infantry charge was clearly beaten back. And the Frankish cavalry was able to annihilate almost all the fleeing infantry there. So, the first skirmish was clearly our defeat. Or perhaps I should call it already the first part of the battle. The situation doesn't look too good either. We have lost nearly one third of our troops. And the enemy seems to be utilizing a similar kind of tactics that worked fine last time. So it might be that it's only a matter of time before we will face another defeat in this battle. Comitatensis, even though they are brave, well-armored professional soldiers, cannot face 5 to 1 odds in a battle like this. However, it seems that Tancred made a tactical mistake by en engaging enemy cavalry a bit too bravely and the light cavalry was forced to flee and even our brave Catholic priests joined the battle. However, that wasn't enough. As Captain Silvanus was killed in action, his uh, second in command ordered the army to withdraw. However, 
It was a bit too little, a bit too late. And two thirds of the host was just gone. And from the Frankish perspective, Augusta Treverorum was once again secure. They were free to continue training troops and they were planning to contact more of the barbarians to enlist their aids, aid in the fight against Rome. So that's already at least three or four Roman armies down this far. And I'm afraid it begins to show rather soon. There are some Roman reinforcements coming in from Gaul, but um, I doubt will that be enough. At the same time, the garrisons of Vicus Alemanni and Augusta Vindelicorum have been almost completely depleted, as well as the garrison of Samaro Priva, and all this makes it very likely that the Franks will attack some of those cities soon and it may mean trouble for our armies even if we are fielding some of our stronger units Auxilia Palatina and Comitatensis in the field already. Some good news there is though that the Celts have landed near Vicus Saxones Ideally pray that they will declare war on the Franks so that perhaps some pressure could be lifted from the front here where the Franks are fighting against us. God be praised, the Burgundy declared war on the Franks. And it may very well be that they will manage to take Vicus Saxones. At least the defenses there are rather limited. However, at the same time, the Frankish host managed to besiege Samaro Priva. And of course, Roman army led by General Augusta, uh, led by Honorius uh, Scribonianus, managed to besiege Augusta Treverorum. However, once again, Tancred was eager to test the Romans in the field. The numbers were pretty much even. However, the Roman infantry was heavy and they had much cavalry and this forced Tancred, forced Tancred's hands not to attack. We will wait what happens. It seems that the Franks have modified their tactics somewhat or strategy so that They are not going to fight the besieging armies right away. Rodolf in Vicus Franki planned to take the field, but he was deterred by the cohorts of Comitatensis that were ready to face him and his army, and he decided to stay in the city. 
and at the same time Captain Tip Tiberius has joined forces with Honorius Scribonianus and we are dearly hoping and all of the actually Roman prisoners here are also praying with me that Augusta Treverorum will be liberated. At the same time we receive some worrying news from Samaro Priva which was once again uh, the population there was exterminated so that might actually mean that the regional capital Avaricum will be left open to the Frankish attacks and that if something is really worrisome Claudio hired some more mercenaries to bolster his host and he ordered his men to move out right away towards Avaricum. He seems to be counting on the fact that his forces in Campus Frisi and Colonia Agrippina will be enough to lift the seats near Vicus Franchi and Augusta Treveror. Let's hope he will be proved wrong. And our brave armies, led by General Honorius Gribonianus and Captain Tiberius, are moving against Augusta Trevororum. Of course, the city is well defended by stone walls, but they should prove to be no match for Roman siege engineering. And it seemed that the cowardly Franks were almost inviting the Romans to the city. I think they will soon see their erroneous ways, even if they are able to present a rather solid force of troops in the city center. But they have besieged it from two different sides, even though they have some archers in the towers that most likely are able to inflict casualties on the army. At least they were able to burn down the battering ram and even hit some comitatensis that are going to the wall. And on the other side, Under command of Captain Tiberius, the Romans had already gained the wall and were soon about to get the gateway under their control. And we are in. We took some minor casualties, taking the gateways. But I think we will soon be able to reach the city center and teach those Franks a lesson, a severe lesson 
about angering Rome. However, it seems that at least Captain Tiberius, or at least Honorius Scriborianus and Captain Tiberius were not wise enough to capture the towers. And that's proving to be problematic because our forces have suffered catastrophic casualties while just marching under those towers and being fight, fired on by the enemy snipers in those towers. So it's no wonder that the morale of our troops is being weakened by such catastrophic casualties and our ability to fight the enemy troops in the city center is drastically lowered. I just hope that our troops will be numerous enough to be able to capture the city center. However, the situation is looking rather worrisome. And it seems that almost all from one of the hosts has been driven off. The Franks are becoming brave enough even to chase them, at least to some degree. There are bodies of Roman soldiers almost everywhere. And finally, the generals have decided to join the fray. However, the troops they once had have been almost completely wiped out. Even the mighty legionaries are breaking and fleeing. And even our archers are not safe behind the enemy lines, or rather behind our own lines, and they are forced to withdraw. General Honorius ordered his brave imperial bodyguard to the battle, and at the same time, for the Razi cavalry was charging on the other side of the enemies. However, the Imperial Bodyguard was facing hundreds of spearmen and enemy cavalry, and that just is not enough. Even Roman bravery was not enough to win that sortie. And with the general's death, it seems that the battle is being lost sooner than later. Already it seems that all of the troops cannot even reach the enemy before they are starting to break. And such behavior most certainly spells doom for any army. And it happened just as I feared. The Roman hosts are being annihilated almost completely. There will be only some few survivors and better that they had not lived to tell the tale of the crushing Roman defeat in Augusta Trevororum. It's almost as if the guard was on the Frank side, even though they are heathens. I'm beginning to doubt that 
that there has been something going on in the Rome, the eternal city itself that has angered God. And now we must pay the price for that. I would recommend, my friend, that you organize feasting and daily prayers to the good health of the Emperor and to the benefit of the Empire and especially for the benefit of its military commanders because situation cannot go on like this much longer. It does not help that new Roman hosts are being sent against Augusta Treverorum because the city will soon be practically impregnable and uh, all those troops that get slaughtered here cannot be sent to the front and there will be a new battle this time in Vicus Franci and if the Franks manage to win this fight I think they will be able to gain the initiative and move against southern Roman provinces or provinces in northern Italy south from their current location And that could really indicate hard times for the Roman Empire. I have no doubt that we will survive. We have survived Hannibal and many other perils during our long and glorious history. But it saddens me to see incompetent generals just to throw away quality troops Practically for nothing. At least they could utilize some good tactics to beat the Franks, but apparently they are not doing it. But we will see how. General Dalmatius Senecio and his host will fare. Unfortunately, the number of troops is smaller than was near Augusta Trevororum. However, there are those legionaries, comitatensis, leading the attack. And that should mean at least something, even after such catastrophic defeats we have suffered here this far. And once again, the Franks are using cavalry tactics. They have pulled to the city center, pulled back. Practically their backs are to the wall. And we managed to capture the walls once again, very easily. And this time there should be no snipers able to fire at us or on our backs while we'll march towards the city center. And even General Dalmatius has joined the fray. And it seems some Limitane and some Limitane have wandered too far off and the enemy have sprung sniper ambush on them. They are being hit in the back while they are marching towards the city center. And the battle is being joined rather soon, the light cavalry is leading the charge. I am worried that they won't be enough to break the enemy spearmen. But we can always hope for the best. It happened exactly as I feared. Our German Foderati cavalry was broken and now it's up to the heavy infantry 
to do the job. To break the enemies here. It seems that the Frank warlords are not content on leading their troops from the back. They are eager for blood and honor and this time one of their generals, Burkhard, was killed while they were attacking against the Forderati spearmen. However, even the mighty legionaries are not impervious to difficult situations and their morale was broken and it seems our general is following the example of the Frankish heathens and he has ordered his bodyguard to the battle and I really hope that he doesn't get himself killed here there is a host of Frankish troops nearby and he got killed and that might spell the doom for his host right away only the roman right flank is still intact the other troops still need to gather their courage to engage the Franks once again. However, it begins to seem like the Roman host's morale is broken and they will be slaughtered inside the city. Even though there is one unit of Comitatensis still offering resistance and hopefully beating back at least the Frankish cavalry. However, the Limitane are absolutely no match for the Frankish troops. Their morale is just too poor. And even the Comitatensis Falter. And our host is being defeated. We have only first survivors getting away from the city, and the Franks did not suffer any critical damage. Perhaps Augusta Trevororum will be besieged once again, but I'm beginning to doubt it, since we have suffered so many catastrophic defeats in the hands of the Franks already. And now Avaricum is being besieged as well. And I'm afraid the Franks will take it soon as well. Vikus Alemanni looks to be very weak, vulnerable to attack. And I'm afraid that Franks will soon utilize that to their benefit. They have even allied themselves with the infamous Lombardy. 
and it seems Augusta Trevororum will not be besieged. The Roman captains are marching past it. And Avaricum will fall. Once again, huge number of people will be massacred or were massacred there. And I'm beginning to worry that our reign in this area will soon be at an end. We have one enclave located in the British Isles, but I'm worrying that can we actually someday uh, connect those British Isles with the rest of the Empire, as the situation is looking so perilous for us, at least for the moment. And it happened exactly as I feared. The Frankish host is moving against Vicus Alemanni. They are hiring once again mercenaries. They are bringing more troops. And they are ready to take it rather soon. Of course, that left Vicus Franki somewhat with weak defenses. However, there is the strong garrison of Augusta Trevororum still ready to serve. And I have no doubt that those forces will soon move to help Vicus Franki if the situation so requires. The barbarians are strengthening their defenses throughout the areas they control and I think it's more than likely that Claudio will soon continue his movements in the east. He's once again calling some more mercenaries to join his banners, and he doesn't need to promise much. He has already shown that he is capable of providing gold to his troops, some serious loot, and even the infamous Royal Knights are already joining his host, even though he must pay quite a bit for them. but. At the moment, he is so rich that he can afford them. I think I have to quit this letter for now. Please gather your family and all of your relatives and everyone you, who you know and pray every day, every night for the health of the Emperor and for the health of the Empire and for the wisdom and courage of its soldiers in the field, so that we might someday beat the scourge that's known as Franks. Yours, Decimus Fabius.